Let's close as we always do. Head around the Inside Politics table. Ask our great reporters to share a little nugget from their notebooks. Get you out ahead of the political news just around the corner. Julie Davis. Well, with all this talk of health care, uh, there hasn't been a whole lot of attention to the tax reform effort that's been underway now for months. Um, the White House is starting to kind of panic about the prospects of not getting this done this year. And so what we're seeing, what we're hearing from these um, meetings that have been going on behind the scenes, uh, Stephen Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary, Gary Cohn, the NEC director, and the top congressional leaders on the Republican side, is that they're sort of starting to think about potentially trimming their sales and not doing a big, massive tax reform, but instead a tax cut, not necessarily getting down all the way to 15 percent, but maybe drifting up more toward 20 percent or higher. And even then, the prospects of that are very much in doubt, and there's a lot of uncertainty about whether they're even going to be able to get that this year. Whew, that would be a huge <laughs> setback. Tick-tock goes the clock. Molly Ball. <laughs> a uh, bipartisan couple of senators, Dick Durbin and Lindsey Graham, reintroduced the DREAM Act this week. This, of course, is the uh, proposed legislation that would grant uh, a form of amnesty to young illegal immigrants uh, who have been in the country for a long time and meet certain requirements. Uh, and uh, it might seem like a strange time to be doing that, but uh, the, this administration has sent very conflicting signals about DACA, which is a similar but executive uh, program that exists. Uh, there are some state attorneys general that are that have imposed a deadline on the administration to basically tell them whether this is going to go or stay. They have been issuing work permits. And so uh, Lindsey Graham at the press conference introducing this said, you know, President Trump, you could really sort of act against type. You could solve this problem. They're hoping that there, there is a chance for this. Hmm. That would be a defining moment for the president. Michael? We talked about Anthony Scaramucci, obviously. Uh, one thing that, um, looking forward, we might see is, and, and this is, you know, always determined, depending on Donald Trump himself and his desires, but there could be an opportunity for a press reboot over some of the issues that the press corps has been arguing with the White House for, uh, uh, access to the president, press conferences, on-camera briefings. There's a new White House Correspondents Association president who's coming in as it happens at exactly the same time that we have a new uh, communications director and head of the communication shop. So will the president allow there to be a kind of reboot on some of these issues? I guess we'll see. We will see. Time will tell. Is that how they say it? <laughs> uh, the NAACP uh, meeting next week on uh, starting Monday uh, in, in Baltimore, and, and really kind of beginning the most important stretch of their uh, annual conference. The question there, how does this uh, very old, the oldest civil rights uh, organization in the country uh, reboot and reimagine themselves in the Trump era, in the era of Black Lives Matter, matter and in the era of resistance? They uh, invited Donald Trump. He uh, said no. He, he wasn't going to come. The White House has said uh, that they'd be happy to work work with the organization and, and be in touch with the organization. Uh, who will be there? Eric Holder will be there. He'll be talking about gerrymandering, something that's very important uh, to, to Democrats particularly. Uh, also, it's being looked at as something of a 2020 cattle call. Uh, also in attendance, Cory Booker, Kamala Harris, and Bernie Sanders. And Bernie Sanders, of course, uh, struggled a bit uh, with getting African-American support uh, when he ran uh, last go round. So we'll see uh, what those folks have to offer. Fun week ahead. Keep yep. an eye on that. I'll close with this. The past few days have caused a disturbing chill among a lot of people, from the worker bees to cabinet secretaries across the executive branch. The White House shakeup, just part of it. More troubling to many was how the president, in that remarkable New York Times interview, so publicly and repeatedly threw one of his earliest supporters, the Attorney General Jeff Sessions, under the bus. Among those who found that unprofessional, to say the least, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, the former ExxonMobil CEO. Secretary Tillerson has a long list of disagreements with the White House, from personnel fights to big policy disagreements. That list grew even longer this past week. His friends outside Washington for some time have been saying that Tillerson talks of calling it quits around the holidays, so he can say he gave it a year. It could be just fresh venting, but keep an eye on Foggy Bottom. In the past day or two, there are rumblings Secretary Tillerson is actively debating a much earlier exit strategy. We'll keep an eye on that. That's it for Inside Politics again. Thanks for sharing your Sunday. Hope you can join us weekdays as well. That's noon Eastern. Up next, State of the Union with Jake Tapper in a live interview with the new man running the White House communications shop, Anthony Scaramucci. <laughs>